so guys guys are you able to see my screen yeah okay sir okay. that is mentioned right. in the newtonic enterprise multi cloud administrator right yes, sir sir right right so uh, this we have already covered in last session i'll just go through a recap so that thiru will be with us so he is okay. behind, behind that so what we have covered in last session that uh, we have covered the prism central prism element so what is prism element prism element uh, where the um, only uh, one cluster or our own cluster you can manage for yeah. that you are using the prism element for prism central you can manage too many cluster and too many data center okay here is the like uh, limit how many uh, vm you can manage how many cluster you can manage so it is mentioned here so it is prism pro it is a advanced feature where you can use your uh, advanced data analytics intelligence in, inside like kubernetes uh, ansible this kind this kind of integration tool you can perform from prism pro okay you got it yeah. Arj, uh, yes, yes yes okay fine and then uh, this is the like console of prism central where you can uh, see iops how, what um, hypervisor version and what <coughs> the new tanix version you are using how many vms are running you can see on the console so this is regarding console only we have gone through like their latency cluster latency iops uh, their memory cpu cluster over, overall memory cluster overall cpu uh, and alert alert warning you have like uh, two warnings since 11 years 11 hours uh, you have two warnings you need to acknowledge this uh, warning this is your host how many hosts you are running how many services vms are running how many are critical how many are like healthy So oh, I will take another recap for you, um, Tiru. Just I'm uh, going through what we have covered in last session. So this this kind of cluster we are using whenever you are using like your vCenter server. So this kind of cluster. So you have three node, three node. For three node, you have created different different virtual machines, CVM. CVM virtual machine through CVM your storage will get connected to each other it will create a one storage pool for for all three these three node no they will create one storage pool and from the storage pool they will create a data store so it will create a one big data store from big data store you can assign small small chunk of pieces and you can assign those pieces to virtual machine so this is how the Nutanix work so Rishad, so then uh, is it kind of like uh, how esxi works is the same way the Nutanix works yes same way so see we have this ahv okay ahv means acropolis acropolis is the operating system of nutanix acropolis uh, is the name of uh, um, operating system is the name of hypervisor aos means acropolis operating system right so i'll give you example here itself Suppose uh, you have like box ESXi, yeah, another box.
A H B. Okay. So You can box or is this just a hardware? Okay. Dell. This is also Dell. Okay, are you able to see this? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay. So, what is the difference between AHV and ESXi? In a uh, in V Center, suppose you are you are using V Center here, V Center, and here you are using your V Center. Yeah. AHV. Okay. Through AHV, you are man managing. So this on this console you'll see this HV hyper what hypervisor you are using HV means you are using HV here okay HV is a hypervisor in normal uh, normally when we are managing we center VMware okay mm -hmm. there is no Nutanix nothing so what what will be our like operating system operating system also ESXi, ESXi okay yeah. yeah and hypervisor also ESXi, ESXi. Yeah. Right. So here the operating system is AOS. AOS. AOS means Ac Acropolis operating, operating, operating system. system. Yeah. And hypervisor will be AHV hypervisor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here what we will get, we will get this kind of environment. Through vCenter, we can yeah. connect. Yeah. But in AHV, we do not have console like yeah. vCenter. Yeah. In ASV, you will see most more flexibility, like everything you can manage through this console. Okay. Yeah. But you cannot get this kind of environment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So same thing. You deployed the you deployed the cluster <coughs> Nutanix. So for uh, for ESXi also for ESXi. For ESXi, for AHV, you will see the same console. Okay. You will yeah. see the same console. Here, when you uh, use the hypervisor as ESXi, you will see here the hypervisor name is ESXi. The rest, all things will remain the same. Okay. You got it. You got my yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. The hypervisor will be same. Like ESXi, they are using AHV okay okay and prism yeah. central iops mm, uh, cpu memory everything if it will monitor how many vms are running 18 vms or what state of vm you are taking so everything will remain the same okay 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 so you 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 got my point yes okay fine So these are the like uh, host disk, mm, how many hosts are connected, how many disks uh, you are using, storage pool. Mm, everything you can see from this prism central prism element. This is your prism central, this is your prism element, both are looking the same. But when you have prism central, you will have more access, more admin privileges and you can manage many cluster and many data center you can manage from here from prism yeah. center yeah. but from prism element you cannot manage more than one whatever connected to your cluster only that cluster you can manage okay okay yeah so this is your health 
storage capacity, CPU capacity. So <clears throat> here everything whatever you want to do like VM management, storage management, network management, hardware, file storage, data production, everything you can just log in from on this website through admin. This is your admin. Are you able to see? Hello? Yeah. Okay. So through admin account, you can log in. And when you go here, just click on VM management. You will see all, all of the VM. Uh, you, what you want to do, like uh, VM clone, snapshot, manage, migrate, everything you can do on the VM management, storage management. When you click, click on the storage, it will show you all the storage. How many okay. storage pool you have created, like storage container, volume, everything you can see there. Okay. Like that networking also, network subnet, uh, the VPC, how many create, network you have created. Hardware also, you can check which hardware you are using. It is a Dell hardware, HP hardware, data protection, uh, whether you have created data resiliency, like you have added, you have spare one of the node from the mm, four node. If you are using four node and you have created one node as a spare node for mm -hmm. resiliency, if oh, something goes wrong, it will add another node. So like that, you have created data protection, like okay. backup, restore, procedure, all things you can cover here. And through LCM, you can patch the server. Okay. Okay. Keep in mind, I will take another session, one session for you separately. After this session, if you want to continue, we'll uh, see in detail. Because I have attended all this uh, overview to uh, Krishna and Arjun. I have given the uh, overview. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, fine. Fine. Uh, last time we have seen how how to create like virtual machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how to create virtual machine means you whenever oh, I have another slide. So we'll go here. So, Arshad, uh, mm -hmm. is it the, the, uh, I mean, how we can install the Nutanix on the bare metal server? So, is that happened or is this uh, still pending? Yeah, I will take you everything in detail. Whether it is take one week, two week or more than that, I will take mm -hmm. uh, ex additionally. But I will cover all this like uh, hardware unboxing, how to deploy what is your storage, how you can create it, okay? But yeah. before going to advanced level, you should be able to understand. Yeah, yeah. Like the tomorrow, level. yeah, tomorrow if they ask you, oh, what do you mean by like uh, storage container? So are you able to answer this question? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, no, no, I am just asking whether it is uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Yeah, no, it's not done. Yet. It's not done, but I will cover. Okay. Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay, so chapter I am covering creating, updating, clone, snapshot on Nutanix. How will how will you do this? So first of all, you go into this Prism Central. In Prism Central, you will see a lot of things. Like how many VMs you are running, VMs in how many VMs are in on state, off state, suspended state. You'll see here, you'll see like mm, how many uh, VMs, their latency, IO latency, IOPS. IOPS means input output per second. Okay, okay. speed. So if you are using very advanced level, uh, all flash or uh, SSD storage, you'll get more IOPS. Okay. Guys, can you please mute yourself? 
okay uh, so uh, you will get more iops if you are using ssd or all flash okay so uh, this is like uh, here you will see the provisional vcpu provisional provision means how many vcpu you deploy okay uh, yeah vcpu is 19 vcpu out of that how how much is usage it okay. is like four percent you have used so if you go down here you will see mm, uh, vm critical alert here you will see the vm critical alert vm mm, events so main thing uh, whenever you like log in on the nutanix portal every day so you need to you need to check how many alerts you see how many events are there is everything running fine so you need to check what is what all are the warning what all are the alert here i what i am why i am not showing because i have installed this nutanix on one host in my company and i am taking the screenshot and i am giving you because from the laptop i cannot share my screen right yeah yeah that is why so here you'll see the guest top guest vm by memory how many guest vm you have top guest vm by cpu okay yeah uh, here the how much how much cpu you have you have and how much memory you have like memory you have uh, 12 gb 12 gb of ram out of 12 gb of ram how much you have used 14 gb so here in company you will see 1 tb okay 1 terabyte okay. of memory yeah out of 1 terabyte you have used 1600 gb right okay yeah so you you are using clustered so all if you collect all cluster so if uh, every mem every like storage has like at least 50 gb of uh, no 500 gb of ram so it club together all the memory and it will give you 150 1 1.5 tb of ram it will okay. show here okay it will collect all the memory all the cpu and all your storage okay. it will create the storage pool memory pool and your cpu also like uh, in our esxi also when we deploy the esxi node it will collect together right yes yes yeah you if you are using sans storage so storage will be uh, collected together cpu yeah. collected together memory collected together yeah so same like uh, when you are creating cluster so it will show all together yes so this is cluster same same like esxi cluster okay okay Okay. But here you'll see a lot of like automation thing. You a lot of like new things you can monitor from here. If you are using a normal ESXi, you'll not able to see what I/O, what latency, what is the memory uh, granular granular level. You cannot see the memory. What memory they are using, right? Suspended, yeah. pause memory. It will not show when you go to like summary inside monitor you will see some of the thing but you cannot see all of the thing right yeah yeah so this is the main advantage of this nutanix so when you are creating virtual machine just go to this tab okay drop down list from this drop down list you need to choose vm okay mm -hmm. once you okay. Cho choose vm here you will see the option create virtual machine and this is option create virtual create vm when you creating vm you need to put your name what is the virtual machine you are creating database virtual machine or any virtual machine your sql web server anything you can put here name and use this vm as agent vm so when this option you will choose when you have like in your environment suppose this server should be uh, like start first if you are if you are creating 15 server like if you are creating ad server dscp server dns server 
SQL Server, Database Server. So which server should be in a uh, start first? Yeah, you tell me which server should be run first so that everyone, every server will get IP. DSCP so, first. DSCP. Yeah. First. DSCP. Right. So yeah. we need. So yeah. whenever we are creating DSCP server, so you, you need to choose this, use this VM as an agent. So it will run first from your okay. all virtual machine. Your this VM DSCP VM will run first. Okay. Okay. And yeah. whenever whenever the, the server is going down, anything happen on your server. So every whenever you are like maintenance mode and you are migrating virtual machine to other host. So this mm -hmm. server will be at the last it will shut down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So D like a DSCP server. When you when you are sh shutting down your all virtual machine, so you will shut down the DSCP server at the last, right? Yes. Same uh, like that. Richard, yes. Uh, I have a small question here. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to migrate uh, or if you want to put a host in maintenance, in ESXi, we do not need to shut down any VM. We just migrate them to other host. But uh, is it, uh, I mean, uh, do we need to mm -hmm. shut down the VMs in Nutanix? To, no, 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 uh, no need to, no need to, no need to shut down. But why mm -hmm. I am asking? So HA, HA, if you come across the HA and DRS feature, yes, yeah. HA, if any node goes down, HA will yes. start the VM on other host. So yes, HA, yes. okay. So in the restart priority, level, priority yeah. you are saying? Yeah, restart priority. So okay. it will be HA will take yeah. this VM in, at the last. Okay. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Then we have like uh, uh, vCPU, how many vCPU, how many cores are there? Same like like we create a VM in our vCenter okay. per vCPU. vCPU means you will get two core, right? Per vCPU, you will get two core. Yeah. Yeah. If you have Eight vCPU, how many core? Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen core, right? Yeah. The same like uh, the bus, bus okay. type means type. bus type. So the connection, connection, storage connection. How you want to create a storage connection? So yeah. whether iSCSI, ID, ID or SATA, what you want to connect? So according to your requirement, you need to choose. So most preferably, whenever you create a word disk, so I SCSI, SCSI only we choose. Okay? Yeah. Because in Nutanix, most of most of the like organization I saw, they are using SCSI only. They don't prefer for PSI or SATA. Okay. They choose only SCSI. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. SCSI adapter is like uh, it's from, it's from. Uh, to may uh, to configure the storage from other side so this uh, we say in the setup internal storage yeah exactly yeah okay. okay here you'll see the storage containers storage container is a collection of your disk so you are creating like RAID configuration is like high level point but in a rate you collect some you collect some list of disk right and you create one volume so same like that container you create uh, you include a lot of disk like 15 disk 14 disk all um, cluster disk you come together and you create a small small storage container so here you need to choose the container you have created two container a default container self-service container so uh, one of the container you will choose from where you will get the storage okay okay this is the volume so volume make a note volume you will add once you create the virtual machine only so volume is like additional additional thing here volume you cannot add you can add storage container right okay 
try to understand this thing with it is very important thing storage container and volume i will cover this chapter today only just go through it i will clear your concept okay okay sir, so actually, what storage... is the meaning of vol- just no sir volume means sir, we can add from another storage like like that yeah like exactly. sand from the sand we create sand and from mm. there we can uh, pull that uh, uh, any of the land and mount here like that or yeah like that only but uh, the volume you created now volume can be added to more than one virtual machine same volume you can add like shade right yeah like mm-hmm. that you can add volume to more than one virtual machine okay, okay. if you created one volume and yeah. that volume you can add to one virtual machine two virtual machine so suppose you have linux server windows server for both the server you can add one volume so both user can see their data in one okay. volume so, so, so you mean sir like that uh, data store in the esx we are using one we create one shared data store and we connect uh, in every uh, virtual no, machine like like, like that l- no like file share like yeah. shared drive no yeah yeah like that but in data store another virtual machine cannot use your data right yeah yeah but here the other virtual machine can access your data this is volume so this is only for the data only data for the only. Dat- only for the data, data. only okay. yeah so okay. volume here is similar to virtual disk in vmware yeah we disk okay Okay, right. No, 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 I think it's not virtual disk. One virtual disk data cannot be seen by other, other VM, right? In VXXI. Yeah, on but the ESXI. No, not, not sync, but accessible. Accessible, yeah. You, we can actually assign same disk to different virtual machine. E- exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. So here, volume group, you can consider VDisk, and here, container. This is, is data like... store. data store yeah data store okay so it is a like number of disk you will include here 15 days yeah. 14 days 10 days yeah. and you create one uh, sand storage and that storage you will assign to virtual machine okay okay, okay. so okay. sir just not sir that volume we uh, mm. it is in that uh, that volume is on the same cluster or that is outsider means any different ip address like uh, that is hp storage or ibm storage that kind of things or this is in the same same cluster how can okay okay let me give me one minute so we will we will go that point okay taking time okay so i should take this chapter first so you will get understand okay okay so what is the storage what is hardware you will come to know what type of disk you you are using dash is like direct attack nas network attach and san is storage attack so other other like storage are like object storage and sds software defined storage software defined storage is like uh, the storage you are managing all your cloud managed storage uh, like so through software you are managing the storage one of the storage learn you are using you are connecting from the cloud and one you are on premises you club together you create a volume this is called software defined storage okay you are using like uh, this is your uh, nv and nvme disk this is your ssd this is your hdd 
So SDD and NVMe are the fastest disk. Yeah. And the protocol, what protocol you are using? SMB file storage protocol. So Nutanix, we have another file share. Nutanix files, we call it as Nutanix files. So what protocol to connecting protocol, what we are using like iSCSI, FC, FCOE, block storage or Nutanix block, block volume. So all these storage are connected together and you are using the disk through the disk, disk to store uh, disk to your, <coughs> this, uh, well, see, previously what we are doing in uh, traditionally, the disk are separated from your server. So to connect your server to your disk, there is a FC fiber yeah. channel, yes. iSCSI, FCOE, Everything required, right? Controller yeah. required, mm -hmm. right? Here, like in DAS, the uh, disk are directly attached to your storage. NAS, NAS is like file server. Your uh, disk are separated, but it is connected through your the Ethernet Ethernet cable. It is the uh, NAS is connected yeah. to your server, but SAN storage it is connected via uh, iSCSI all server and all storage are different here in between you need to attach the switch and switch to storage and switch to the server are connected and you are creating this is the all this you club together and you create a storage okay same yeah. like SAN storage you are creating container okay yeah storage container what point we are covering here in Nutanix storage container means here adding the disk okay mm -hmm. adding uh, you are taking 10 days 15 disk and collecting all this together and you creating one container okay same okay. like in uh, sand storage you do mm -hmm. so as i told you this is like the switch ethernet ethernet switch and your fiber channel switch you're using here in sand storage mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is like Azure, Azure premium storage, uh, cloud storage. In cloud storage, uh, you, every storage has their uh, own capability. Like yeah. AWS, you are using Elastic Blob Storage, right? Mm. S3 bucket you are using. So in Azure, you are using um, Blob Storage, files, uh, file storage, right? Mm. So same like in Nutanix, you are using. Nutanix object storage. Okay. Okay. Nutanix, you are using AOS and VMware, you are using vSAN and like uh, Cisco, you are using Hyperflex. So these are the like software defined storage you are using. Mm. So this is this software defined storage means uh, vSAN is your software defined storage, right? You create a pool, you collect all the storage together. Okay, you collect all the storage together, you create a pool and you create, right? So this is called software defined storage. VMware, vSAN is software defined and Nutanix AOS is software defined. Same like in Cisco, Hyperplex is software defined storage. So this is, this is the like um, overview of Nutanix. You create a you create a cluster of all nodes and you create the storages one disk here one disk here one disk here all the disk you created. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah, sir. We are hearing your voice. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, just, just. Okay, somebody is speaking. Who is this? Arjun, uh, Krishna, 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 Krishna,
Okay, sir, you can continue, I think. Okay, fine. So, we are using the storage we uh, here, SAS storage. In uh, traditional data center, what we are using, we are using the ESXi, ESXi1, ESXi2, ESXi3. To access the storage from this SAN storage, it will take some time, right? For 100 IOPS, it is giving here from the storage. From 33K IOPS, it is giving here the speed. But when uh, the storage is reaching to your ESXi server, it is like your vCenter virtual machine. It is taking too much time. So this is the major advantage of your Nutanix. So it will save your IOPS, the, the, it will increase the IOPS. When you are using Nutanix, the major advantage you can tell in interview that the IOPS, IOPS has been increased. Um, and you are using SSD, through SSD you are uh, increasing a lot of IOPS. Okay. So this is your traditional... So that means, Richard, you are saying in, a, in Nutanix we have only used SSD? As a storage? No, we are using SDD, SSD, all flash drive. So it is your requirement how you want you want so, to purchase. Yeah. So, we so have, then how Nutanix is increasing the IOPS to virtual machine? It as per your requirement, right? So no, that, that, see, that if you are using, mm -hmm. if you purchase, if you purchase a box where you have like six SDD and okay. six SSD, you okay. club together, you create a storage pool, and mm -hmm. through that, any any way it is increase your IOPS as compared to your ESXi, right? Uh, but if I you mean, are using all SDD, say, uh, yeah. okay. Let let me let me ask you in this way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the traditional ESXi, how we connect the storage is uh, we put a sand, sand switch between the uh, ESXi and the storage and we do a joining so that the ESXi is able to see the storage what we're providing from the storage end. So uh, in right. this way, so the storage has to reach for the first the FC switch and there it is from, it has to go to the store, uh, ESXi. So where we, we get that IOPS uh, or less when as compared to uh, the storage providing. Yeah, exactly. So, so you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, how Nutanix is minimizing that to increase so, that IOPS speed? So Nutanix created. And so what? Point is, so how storage is connecting to Nutanix servers? So Nutanix created the internal network. When you creating this CVM, no. The CVM manages all your storages, mm -hmm. right? See, every every host they have assigned one CVM, okay? Through CVM, CVM okay. collect all storage together. It will create a pool, and this all the nodes your nodes are clubbed together, okay? And they have their oh. own networking fiber channel inside the box. Okay. Inside the box itself, they are using the fiber uh, fiber connection. Mm -hmm. One box to one box to another box. Uh, uh, one to second, second to third, they have created uh, EFC, uh, fiber channel connection. Okay. Yeah. So if they created one storage pool. So it will increase so your then, IOPS. Yeah. It, it 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 is you can say like uh, we send we are configuring the ESX. In ASV, yeah, like a V cell. Similar. Yeah, similar. So where like where the storage is directly directly from the ESX host itself, so that yeah. increases the IOPS. It it no need to go to switch level. <laughs> yes, yes. So they it's directly accessed from host itself. Yeah, they they are doing by their own. Yeah. No need to okay. go to switch and switch to storage. There are too much latency, right? You, yes, you yes. might be some cable disconnection, latencies in the network. So it will affect your storage yes. server, everything, right? So no need to go to the, your storage or network. They are clubbed together and see this. this yeah, now I, got, okay. now I got okay. it that. So, okay. yeah. 
the internal storage is itself using for the volume creation yeah exactly so if yeah. you want to create a storage pool you no need to mm -hmm. go beyond this three node all things mm -hmm. you need to club together and you will get the storage from here only no need to yeah. create so they okay. will create the uh, zoning your fiber mm -hmm. channel everything yeah. is placed inside this nutanix itself okay okay so Got all it. this thing is managed by your cvm so what cvm will do cvm is they is connected to storage controller every box has storage controller okay yes the storage okay. control the storage controller is managed by your cvm okay. okay and cvm also every box has one cvm controller virtual machine cvm is controller virtual machine this um, node one has one cvm node two has one cvm node three has one cvm if one cvm goes down so all the mm -hmm. two cvm can manage so there is okay. a, like redundancy so if one go cvm goes down other two cvm can manage all this uh, storage related task okay, okay. but okay. if two cvm goes down so there will be no redundancy so that you means it mind. depends on the nodes we have connected right nodes yeah. how many nodes we have connected for each node you need to create one cvm so that we have to manually install right it won't come by default the cvm yeah, you need VM. To it is just a oba oba provided yeah, yeah. from the nutanix you need to deploy oba and you need to okay, on okay. that virtual machine in your uh, v center server or whatever asv you are using whether it is nutanix or esxi you are using yeah i understood that yeah as you can see there is a hyper converge uh, system does the following thing virtualization move the controller to the host provide uh, the course yeah here knowledge. i have a small uh, doubt here so what mm -hmm. what exactly mean by hyper converge i have i heard this word uh, many times hyper converged uh, environments so what exactly it means so uh, man who is this uh, is this arjun or is this tiru no no it's tiru yeah that is why i am asking because this point i have already yeah if you know this okay. answer you don't have asked the previous question yeah i i already explained in previous chapter what yeah. is hyper converge okay uh, we'll do one thing uh, so if you have that hyper. previous no it's okay is it so mm -hmm. if you have that previous recordings so please mm -hmm. share with me so i will go through them so then you, you can continue with this session no problem okay okay hyper converge so, is uh, this converge means converge means your uh, traditional in converge your your whatever you are running your vmware esxi that is your converge already you are using san is different your network is different your server are different so this is converge hyper converge means you club all together and you create a nutanix box like a nutanix we have like uh, vx rail in the market right uh, s uh, ucs cisco ucs this is hyper converge from azure the uh, azure stack is available so these are the hyper converge so if you see this box all together they are clubbed together and they have clustered together the no need to connect to the like switch you storage or anything all mm -hmm. you will get here only so this is your converge infrastructure Okay. Okay. Yeah. In uh, uh, the, the, it is your hyper converge. In converge infrastructure, your storage is different. Your network is different. Your okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I got that. So, uh, hyper converge is like the same uh, vendors. I can say, like uh, if it is in Nutanix, it all from Nutanix. If it is from I can even vendor up Dell or it, all everything from the Dell like that, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, Virtu <clears throat> virtualize virtualizes and move the controller to the host. Provide core service and logic through the software and distribute sh and shared um, data across the node. So here you will see 
if one CVM goes down, you will have another CVM. If one storage goes down, you have there is a redundancy in between that. If one if you, you if you are using three nodes, if one node goes down, you still you have mm, uh, another node. The storage, the data is getting sync with all the storage. If you are you running one VM here in node one, you are running database VM. So this database VM will create a copy in uh, another another uh, Nutanix uh, also. So when this uh, Nutanix failed node, that uh, VM you will get from here also, from here also. So it will take a snapshot uh, at every... Can you mute yourself? A lot of noise is coming. So if one VM, uh, VM goes down here, or one node goes down, that VM automatically gets started from here. Uh, not started, it is not continuously getting sync. Okay. okay. Continuously getting sync. So there will be no downtime here if one node goes down. So that VM will be running from here. You so, mean it won't restart to another node, right? Yes, it won't restart to another node. Okay. So this is your box, Nutanix box. In in Nutanix, everything is clubbed together. So you have four nodes. There's the server inside that. So server one, server two, server three, server four. So every uh, this is like your block inside your node. Okay, how many blocks inside your node? So there are four blocks inside your node. This is your node. This is your block. So inside that, uh, this is your SSD, SDD, and you, you are connecting through SBA. SBA like used for fiber channel connection, right? Yeah. Yes. So this file, SBA is connected to your CVM. Okay. Every, okay. every node has its own CVM. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So CVM is connected through HBA fiber channel through your SSD and SDD. Okay. It oh. club together. It will create one storage pool. Okay. Storage pool means it will create one volume, big volume. Okay. Okay. Sand storage. So it will create like software defined storage. You can see too many things. Sensor what they are using Hyper-V. So here we will see in deep how the CVM will create every node has its own CVM, its own HDD, SSD and CVM is managing everything. Okay. okay. CVM, CVM has its own cluster. Okay. Mm -hmm. If one CVM goes down, other will take charge and they will manage all the CVM related tasks. So this VM will move to this host and you need to create the percentage level also. Percentage, you need to define how many VMs should be migrated to here, how many VMs should be migrated to here. Like in DRS, we have we have something called Yeah, resource utilization percentage. Affinity, yeah, affinity rule is available here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will we will see that affinity rule when we are creating virtual machine. At okay. the time of virtual machine creation, you will see that affinity rule. Okay. Okay. We'll check. We'll look into detail. Okay. So what? Uh, this is the like. In, an in interview when they ask you what is uh, DSF, means you should understand like distributed storage fabric. It is a storage pool created by CVM. Okay. Okay. So it is distributed storage fabric. So you have ADF, ADSF also. In Nutanix, we have another concept called ADSF, means additional distributed storage fabric. So you are adding another storage, another distributed storage you are adding. So keep this point. Make a note of it. 
what is distributed storage fabric it is it is a storage pool created by cbm okay additional storage in the sense uh, additional storage means you are adding another storage okay uh, when you when you are creating virtual machine there is mm -hmm. option called ads adsf means you have storage available and you are adding another storage there it is called additional distributed storage fabric so sir we are adding this addi additional storage from the same block na no, sir not from another right yeah same block but mm -hmm. if you want to add from another block also you can add okay and from another hardware we can yeah. uh, so we we can also add see see you, if you are using site a and site b yeah site a you have created one virtual machine and you want to create a dr disaster recovery from site b yeah mm -hmm. so for that reason you are adding additional distrib distributed storage mm -hmm. so you are taking the storage from other node other nutanix nodes and you are uh, adding that storage to your virtual machine so it is called additional distributed storage fabric you are taking the storage from other node and other host yeah. other nutanix uh, block only cluster okay. yeah another nutanix cluster not from uh, any other only for another nutanix cluster right exactly another nutanix cluster okay so we cannot use another uh, uh, from uh, uh, without uh, means we, we don't want we don't have so he is saying he is saying like uh, we cannot use other vendors like from dell not from nutanix HP. if we have another yeah. uh, Storage, so we can use that things or not? No, no. AD ADSF how we can create? You should create your storage pool also, no? Yeah. If we are using Nutanix, only then you can create your pool, and then that storage pool you can use. If you are using ESXi, so in ESXi there is no facility called distributed storage fabric, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Got it. Uh, yeah. But you can add virtual disk v disk mm -hmm. virtual disk to your existing virtual machine if mm. you have created v disk anywhere in your environment and you want to attach that v disk to your vm storage yeah vm you can use that right yeah so this <clears throat> so adfc is uh, basically for replication right yeah repli yeah replication So replication so that when there is a disaster you can recover it from the other side yeah exactly okay so what the advantage it is providing like tiering tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 compression compression means you are compressing the data yeah if your data is 10 tb and after compressing it is getting you the 6 tb it yeah. is complex data right yes yes yeah, yeah it is E erasure erasure coding erasure coding also like mm, it is like compression technique only whenever okay. you are your eraser erasing means deduplication okay duplicate data you are erasing so okay. it is called eraser coding you need to you can uh, enable this feature whenever you are creating virtual machine so mm, whenever you are, you are creating storage or something like that you need to enable this eraser coding okay so this eraser coding compression deduplication resilience this point definitely in interview they will ask okay so make a note of it okay see this point uh, yeah, this uh, distributed distributed storage fabric eraser coding resilience deduplication compression this this they simply ask what is the eraser coding if they will consider if you are experienced you will you will explain erasure coding like deduplication where the data is getting duplicated that duplicated data can be erased only the one copy will be used yes okay yeah this feature you can enable on the virtual machine you can explain okay snapshot locality locality mean everything everything you it is available locally okay locality means everything 
you no need to go to switch level you no need to create a zoning if zoning is crashed uh, so something happen on the network side something happen on the power side something like there is no dr no connection like that there is nothing right everything you will get from here in uh, inside your storage box right so understand this concept locality means uh, everything locally is available okay yes. clone clone you can create n number of clone just right click on the page uh, uh, go to vm go to vm tab you will at the bottom side you will uh, see the option we'll see in detail uh, i have all the screenshot of that how you create a clone how you uh, create a uh, snapshot everything i have uh, like sc screenshot i will tell you in detail how many clone you want to create you just give the number i need 15 clone it will create the 15 clone you want to just uh, give the index from 1 to 20 so it will give the name like that vm1 vm2 vm3 vm4 vm5 vm6 up to vm20 it will cre create a clone like that okay okay resilience means if you are using if you are using three node four node five node if one node goes down there is no dis disturbance in your existing environment everything will be running as it is so it is like uh, we have failover yeah failover yeah so and failover DW capacity yeah failover capacity deduplication means deduplication means uh, data suppose packet, packets yeah. with the same data will be stored only suppose, once suppose you have you have same kind of data yeah inside inside your storage like uh, you have created like any text file mm. and same same type of text file uh, available here in this node here in this node here in this node so it will delete yes. that all the like uh, duplicate copy it will keep only one copy. okay yeah this is called the de deduplication if yeah. like, in text also in video also it will find all the small character also in text wise it will find how many a's are there only the 16 a it will uh, delete all 15 a it will keep only one a so it will not de uh, duplicate all the data it will delete all duplicated data it will keep only one character that is called deduplication oh so if yeah. That is due duplicate. Then errors there is how it is different from deduplication. Error code. Eraser er, coding. Er, eraser yeah. coding means that deduplication. If you want to perform deduplication, you need to uh, enable this eraser coding. Okay. So eraser coding, what it will do? It will mm -hmm. delete the all duplicated data. Okay. Okay. So it will increase your will, uh, decrease your storage size. If it is the storage size is your like 500 GB, so it will make like 300 GB or 200 GB of your VM. Mm, yeah, that I understood. But yeah. what what this deduplication do that? I mean, if this deduplication should work, we need to erase this erase report or mm. how it is? See, understand the deduplication concept. Mm -hmm. To implement this deduplication, you mm -hmm. need to enable this erasure coding. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So, okay. This is very important, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every, every, you know, every interview, they are asking what is Stargate, Stargate, what is the Zookeeper, what is Zeus, what is Prism, everything they will ask. So, please try to understand. Uh, I will share this slide after the session so go through this and by heart you need to remember what is target what is medusa so these are the process is running inside the like your cluster okay so in a cluster so you are managing prism okay mm -hmm. all from the browser so this is your hypervisor client this is your browser output station uh, this is your prism central and this is your hypervisor client okay 
in hypervisor mm -hmm. you uh, you have created some like virtual machine something here and from prism central hello sir uh, hello hello yeah hello. arjun here sir i yeah. have one query can you mm -hmm. go back back that uh, back slides yeah mm -hmm. yeah compression what is the compression ratio in this newtonics means uh, if you compress 1 gb file 1 gb or uh, any data so mm -hmm. what is the that ratio means uh, that will compress 50 percent or 80 percent how means any yeah. compression uh ratio. any limit any limit for that yeah there is a limit uh, uh, so it's depend on your uh, like uh, what storage you are purchasing okay if you are purchasing all flash drive or ssd you will get high deduplication or compression ratio if you are purchasing like sdd or ssd uh, mixed together no you will get less compression and less deduplication thing so any uh, any document for that available for compression no, you need, see so for how, compression how, how, no yeah. for compression and deduplication whenever you are purchasing that time only they will give you that this uh, this this percentage of data will be compressed and you need to come continuously monitor that data how much data has been compressed on the website itself it will show on the prism central also there is some tab where it will show how, may, how much data has to compress. So near about 60 to 80 percent data is getting compressed. 60 percent? Yeah, 60 percent. And what is the sir, snapshot snapshot size? If we uh, take the snapshot of any virtual machine, if my mm -hmm. virtual machine size is a uh, 2 GB, like that. So how much uh, it will, how much size snapshot it will create? 20% of 20% of your snapshot. So any uh, any uh, concrete data is available for that, sir? Miss any yeah. uh, any uh, document or anything? So we can go through that things like that. See, uh, um, there is a website, Nutanix website available. On the Nutanix website, if you go co compatibility metrics, so you will see all the metrics over there. So if you are using compression, how much is the compression ratio it will provide. If you are using, there are some stove uh, like a box available like NX30, NX40, NX80. So this kind of box, if you want to purchase, like for small business, you are purchasing NX30. For me medium, you are purchasing NS NX80 like that. Uh, let me check inside this if I mention this thing. Yeah. Here, like Nutanix hardware, this is the product series. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Are we on the same like Nutanix X86? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. Here you will see the like what uh, what is your hardware? So. This is NX, NX means it is your Nutanix hardware. This is your product series. Three is your product series. Four is your cluster. How many node you are adding? Four node. Okay. So chassis factor six, six chassis. So variant. So same like that. This is your serial number will be get created. And this is your products. These products is provided from the Nutanix. NX81590 here. So, how much uh, maximum memory you will get? So, how much uh, like you know, processor you will get? Okay. So, for uh, use cases for database, business critical app, backup, disaster recovery, you can use NX81, NX31. How where you can use this NX81? So, you know, private cloud, end user computing, virtual desktop, you can use this. So, different different boxes are available. So according to your requirement, you need to connect with Nutanix uh, sales guy and you need to explain your requirement. So according to your requirement, he will suggest you, oh, this is the best suitable Nutanix. 
where you can use this for database purpose. If you are using database and this is your NX81, you will get this much of uh, memory, this much of your st storage. Okay. okay. And uh, here, the storage type, if you go to storage type, you will see all SSD, NVMe and SSD, all SSD. What type of storage you want to choose, you can choose here. So if you see here NX81, there is no SDD. All SSD or NVMe you, you can purchase. Okay. Okay. But here NX10, NX10 you can club uh, SDD together. SSD plus SDD or SSD plus SDD, SCD. So you can purchase like that. So maximum memory you will get 43 TB. Okay, box, box plus CPU will be 20, 20 core CPU. Okay, you got this? Okay. Yeah. Okay, where are we? This is your cluster component. Okay. A zookeeper. This is all these are the process. Okay. These are the services running inside your Nutanix. If the Stargate services get failed, so you uh, you are not able to connect with uh, other node. Okay. You'll, okay. you'll see a lot of disturbance in your network. Some VMs will not be running. Some VMs is getting hanged. Some VM will not be getting the storage, something like that. So what Zookeeper? Zookeeper will manage the cluster configuration. If the zookeeper get failed, right? So your cluster config, you will not get the cluster configuration. Okay, there are there are zookeeper available inside your Nutanix. Every node has this all. Every node has its own target Prism, um, Cassandra zookeeper. Okay. Okay. So they are redundant also. So every node has its own. Um, the star gates, its own prism center, uh, its own Cassandra zookeeper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one node goes down, so its zookeeper will get failed, Cassandra will get failed. So other nodes, Cassandra zookeeper will manage all the cluster together. Okay. Don't okay. go with the name, what, what the name it is calling zookeeper, Cassandra. They have given the name on their processes. Don't go into deep. Okay. Just uh, remember what is Cassandra, what is Zookeeper, what is Zeus. Oh, this is Zookeeper manages the cluster configuration. Uh, curator manages the, like, uh, handles the map, reduces the cluster management and cleanup. Like, curator, it will manage or he, his task is only to clean the, like, whatever. <coughs> Uh, whatever the unused data like unused uh, data, uh, snapshot snapshot are there or stale stale images uh, vm images are there his work is to clean those all stale stage images all the uh, like snap, snapshot uh, his work is and uh, cassandra cassandra distributed the metadata store cassandra distribute the metadata Metadata means data about data. Yeah. Whatever the VM's data, Nutanix data, data about data, it shares with each other. It will share with Prism, it will share with Zookeeper, it will share with Stargate. Stargate, sometimes Stargate, uh, Zookeeper assigns some task to Stargate, it will go to Cassandra, Cassandra will tell uh, Stargate, this is the VM, Zookeeper is asking to provide the VM state. So. Cassandra will provide the data about data to Stargate. What Stargate will do? Stargate will do data IO manager for cluster. So Stargate is responsible for IO manager. Uh, IO, whatever the input and output is coming from outside, it will uh, it will manage all the input output. Okay. And okay. Medusa, what Medusa will do? Medusa will access interface for Cassandra. Hmm. This is the Medusa. Access interface for Cassandra. If Cassandra Cassandra want to clean up any VM which is which is stale or which is not in use, and he, he, he 
he he uh, know that this vm is not in use you want to delete that vm so he will just uh, ask medusa medusa uh, i need the access for that uh, particular vm for for particular storage or for particular thing so medusa will give access it will access the interface for cassandra medusa what medusa will do it will access the particular storage what is, whatever the entity whatever entity you want to delete or you want to clean medusa will provide the access for that okay yeah. and prism prism as you know management interface for nutanix io and sli api so you can manage all things like in the nutanix through prism prism is, is the connection prism is the main connection for your all storage okay okay uh, you can access through putty you can access through ncli api you can connect your storage if suppose disaster recovery have happened your you know, storage box failed some of the disk are failed inside your storage and you want to troubleshoot what happened exactly and from the hardware side you you, know, you have you have replaced the hardware everything together and still some of the issue is coming so what nutanix guy if you raise a, a nutanix l4 ticket okay level 4 ticket if you raise so what nutanix guy will do he will connect through putty he will connect the prism central and any one of the cvm he will connect okay mm -hmm. he will connect through any one of the CP cvm through putty and he will go inside and do the troubleshooting okay so this is the main interface to the nutanix okay okay so all your nutanix storage box everything will be managed through the prism okay you understood this uh, stargate cassandra zookeeper curator hello Yes, sir. Uh, it is better if you could explain one more time. Okay. Inside, inside your, yes, inside sir. your, inside your Nutanix, Nutanix running your storage boxes together. Okay. Okay. So VMs, VMs is uh, sending data. So CVM is running beside that, and there is storage pool. Uh, your you know, V disk, your VMs, everything is running. Some be behind that scene, there are some process running. Okay. Okay. So these process called the Stargate, Zookeeper, Cassandra, Curator. These are the process. If you go inside, what process? If the Zookeeper failed, he is responsible for managing the cluster configuration. If the Zookeeper service is failed, this is called services man. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, these are the like your cluster component. All the cluster, these are your component of your cluster. If Zookeeper service is failed, you you will not get the cluster configuration. Other, like you may face some difficulty while running your business, and some uh, VMs are not getting uh, uh, running or it is not getting migrated to another host. It is gave, stuck uh, somewhere else. So. You will what you will do. You will take the putty. You will take uh, one of the CVM. You connect one of the CVM through putty, and you will go inside and check uh, top through top command. You will see the process are running. Uh, how many process are running? So zookeeper is running or not running? You will check if it is get somewhere. You will just restart this zookeeper. Your cluster start working. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now you understood. Zeus. If the Zeus is not working, access interface for Zoo Zookeeper. So Zookeeper will not work, right? Okay. Zoo Zookeeper is depend on your Zoo service. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Zookeeper. Zoo. What Zookeeper will provide? It will provide the cluster configuration. So yes. whatever you are running cluster. It requires cluster configuration, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Who will provide the, the other information like uh, SMB information or like uh, 
Cassandra distribute metadata, metadata or SMB information it require for Zoo. So who will provide that? Who will connect to other other services, other component like Zoos? The Zoos will connect to Stargate. Zoos will connect to Cassandra. He will provide the metadata. He will provide the SMB shares, uh, NFS connection to the storage. It it will provide all the de detail to Zookeeper, and Zookeeper will collect all the detail and put in put it in the cluster configuration. Boss, this is my connection to storage. This is my connection to metadata. This VM has this information. So all information is provided by Cassandra. Cassandra provide the metadata. Okay. Okay. So star star gate. So star gate manages the I/O. I/O manages for the cluster. So if a cluster require how many I/O? Uh, when you go to like your prism central. Okay. Let me are you able to see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Here in Prism Central, how many IOPS are there? Who will provide this information? It will provide by Cassandra, right? Cassandra yeah. will provide all the information. So yeah. here, so cluster information. If you are running some cluster, so how many cluster are running? Cluster configuration, cluster memory, cluster CPU. How how much CPU has been provided? Cluster, all this cluster information configuration provided by Zookeeper. Okay. So VM, how many VMs are running? How many, what VMs you are running? So this information will be provided by, provided by your Cassandra, right? Stargate, this is Stargate, Cassandra, Zookeeper. Keep in mind. Okay. Okay, Stargate provide the IOPS. How many? How, how many IOPS? How many IOPS are coming and going inside? They will he will manage all the IOPS. Okay, Stargate. <laughs> Cassandra will be responsible for distributing metadata, data about data, like what VM, what is the VM? It is a database VM. It is SQL VM. How much data it is using? Like it is getting hang up all the vms or all the any component related data it will provide by cassandra and zookeeper is responsible for cluster configuration okay yeah, yeah. creator is creator is handle map reduces the cluster and manage the clean cleanup so creator if creator is failed so you will not get too much difficulty try to understand if the curator, curator means the name indicate cure, means something goes wrong, something like um, the stale image is running or the, you have created one snapshot and you left that snapshot for the longer time, okay. you have reverted and it will create some stale images, too many stale images running inside that. I work with Nutanix guys, L4 guys. I I saw too many stale stale images are running inside there. If the curator is not working properly, that stale images can will get, get increased, and it will create a problem for your Prism Central, some of the like your cluster configuration. Okay, so okay. curator, you need to check curator is working fine or not. Okay, for his work is. Use for reducing the cluster management and cleanup. Yeah. Okay. His work is only for cleanup. 
whatever the unused data he, he, he will clean those data okay. okay okay now understood stargate medusa cassandra yes hello yeah thiru yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah i got it yeah, yeah it's clear okay. now yeah thank you okay fine so <clears throat> this is your traditional infrastructure this is your cluster um, hyper converged infrastructure in uh, converged infrastructure you are using separate you you using server is separate you are using uh, node is separate and your storage is separate where the nutanix club together and you can create your virtualized environment and everything comes inside that all nodes are uh, connected together with hba connection okay okay and mm -hmm. hba connection and your storage is managed by your cvm okay mm -hmm. scale out so you can have uh, for scale out purpose if you have created suppose you are running three node cluster okay mm -hmm. so uh, this is your hardware you can purchase from dell ibm or lenovo also so dell providing the same series of nutanix so you can purchase from other vendors also okay rack what is the node block and rack so a rack is you know the stand alone box here this yeah. is your rack inside the your rack you will put the um, your new nutanix cluster okay same like this you'll have too many nutanix boxes so um, like you want to create a cluster of eight eight nutanix you can create a cluster of eight you can create 16 cluster you can club together if you want to create a two cluster and if you want to manage this two cluster by prism central you can manage all the two cluster Okay. for this four for this four node you create a one cluster for this four node you have created another cluster same you can do that also so this is called unity from this node to this node it is one unity two unity unity three so the number is mentioned here if you go to data center when you visit to data center you need to mention boss unity 16 i have attached this box and this box is not blinking when you open the cover from this here, you'll see too many disks available there. So this disk, disk one, disk two, disk three. Okay. Okay. So generally, what is this uh, form factor? Like um, one U or two U? Form factor? Yeah. No, there is no form factor. There is replication factor. Redundancy mm -hmm. factor, yeah. Replication factor, redundancy factor. If you, if you have three three node, okay, three node cluster, you will get two two RF. RF means replication factor. So you will have one R is here, one R is here. In between three node, you will get two R. So it will replicate in between these two. This will replicate in between these two okay replication vector so when you open nutanix you will get uh, this kind of storages like 6tb of storage 6tb 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 you mean saying uh, the std of for uh, 6tb capacity yeah okay cool uh nutanix node block rack node as you see nutanix node is the single hello kind of blade hello server. sir hello sir arjun yeah. here yeah now this uh uh is, is hdd in the red or without red all this yes. hdd in the red configuration or not means that is uh red, that is have a red configuration or not the red configuration or uh, what technology they are using it is not managed by us okay okay so there is no if you want to attach this you can directly attach this all the configuration is done by the hardware itself okay. no need to configure do the configuration 
it is all, all the disk are hot shapeable yeah. you can okay. remove at any time you can attach any time but okay. you need to think about redundancy how much redundancy is there how many disk required for running the business okay if okay. there is a yeah if there is a, a two spare disk you can easily uh, disconnect any one of the disk any one of the disk you can add okay okay so there is no red configuration you need to do okay but where uh, in esxi side you need to do the red configuration yeah right yeah. yeah so what exactly his point is is it already configured in a raid or uh, yes oh, it is a uh, yeah it is already configured in a raid i am not sure yeah. which raid they are using raid 6 or raid uh, uh, yeah. 10 10 but it is already configured you no need to about uh, uh, okay. like think about red configuration yeah i have given too many interviews in nitanix no one has asked me about the red configuration yeah okay okay, okay. okay. Yeah. because okay. red is not come into picture when you are using traditional boxes you need to create red configuration yeah. sp del sp brolian most of the thing you need to create a volume red red volume and you need to assign that volume so no it will not come here okay okay New, nutanix node is a single kind of plate server fit into the nutanix box and contain contain the compute cpu memory where the nutanix block is contained the storage is this okay so nutanix node this is your node this is your node 1 node 2 okay mm. when you when you are visiting when you are visiting to data center if some node is goes down so how you will tell to your manager if manager is very technical he is asking you boss tell me which node is get failed and why it is blinking in a red check and let me know so how you will tell so you will tell boss node second has been failed so unity number is 15 this is the node has been failed okay in in that node okay in that node blade which memory which sdd is failed can you check so you will open a box in a box you will see these these are the like block okay yeah block 1 block 2 block 3 block 4 okay. okay in one node this is node this is block 1 block 2 block 3 block 4 okay, okay. Mm-hmm. inside this block there is a memory okay here this cpu okay this is the hard disk is running inside that in in front side you can see the hard disk okay, okay. C- cpu and ram will be there so uh, nv ram cpu all this thing you can see here okay this is your okay. ram are yeah. these blocks are hard swappable yeah, yeah blocks yeah. are should, yeah blocks is yeah. yeah blocks are hard swappable these blocks are hard swappable but you need to keep in mind that it is redundant okay yeah okay how many blocks you can remove at one time if you are removing two blocks there will be no redundancy then yeah. it will get failed your server will get failed okay yeah so okay. make sure if there is a redundancy available and then and then only you can remove this block okay this is so, your like yeah so <coughs> storage uh, storage and you will see all the storage in front of your nutanix box here is the key with with the key you can open a block so this is your all the disk sdd or ssd are there so it is fan every every block has its sep- separate fan available so this is sfp you can create a, you can directly connect the your network to sfp this is your ram Uh, the, so cpu is also here and cpu ram available here so there is a, some network adapter nic 
two NICs available for redundancy purpose. If you want to purchase four NIC for redundancy purchase, you can purchase also. This is uh, this is your SFP. SFP port means you can connect through your uh, you can connect uh, your cable here SFP. Okay. Okay. Your data connector. You uh, it is a 10, 10 GB connector and uh, CAT six cable. You can connect the CAT six cable. So uh, QSFP, SFP also there, and there is a also called QSFP. The SFP gives the data rate is 10 GBPS, okay? And where the QSFP, QSFP, so there is a two types of SFP are there. SFP is connector, okay? This um, card and connector, this is called SFP, QSFP. This is your SFP, okay? If you want to connect any one of the any one of the node, any one of the block, you can use this SFP. You can connect your cable here. In front of cable, you will see this SFP is connected. Hello. Yeah, sir. Yeah, 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 sir, yeah. yeah. sir. Please go ahead. Are you, yeah. So SFP. Uh, whenever you want to connect any box, okay. If you want mm -hmm. to connect any box here. So you need to use this SFP, this SFP, and you need to connect the SFP in front of your cable, and that SFP you can pl plug beside that these blocks. Okay. Okay. You understood. So you will get console cable. So this console. Oh, uh, special uh, a question here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the one module for SFP cable is plugged into here. And the other end mm -hmm. is plugging where? Plug to your switch. For first okay. configuration, see first mm -hmm. configuration, you need to connect your laptop. Okay. okay. When you are configuring, when you are deploying this uh, storage box to your client, suppose you have, you are a data center guy and okay. you have like two to three data center. And you want mm -hmm. to deploy this server in a client data center, okay? okay and okay. when you are deploying this uh, fresh piece, so whenever you want to configure, so you will you will connect this SFP cable, you will attach here, mm -hmm. you will attach here with the laptop, you will do all the configuration, like okay. IP address, IP address, mm -hmm. I will tell you, this, this kind of information you need to get, what so, MAC yes. address, each block we need to configure or how it is no you need to configure the uh, like uh, node node only node ip address you need to keep cvm okay. address you need to keep not block so cvm okay. cvm the cvm cvm1 hypervisor ipm so all this information you need to give like what is your dns what is your gateway what is your mac address ntp server NTP server will provide your timing, okay? Okay. Network mask, what mask you are using, 192, 10 dot, and what gateway, which router you are connecting, what is your DNS1 and DNS2. This IP you need to get from the client, from the network team. And you, whenever you are configuring at the first time, you will connect your console cable here, and you need to do all your configuration. Okay. Okay. So this is your. Uh, you should know what is SFP, what is uh, QSFP, what type of cable you are using. Okay. This is your Nutanix block model. Okay. Block model. So product series, chassis series, factor, variant. So whenever in an interview. In, not usually they don't ask they just ask what version you are using so you yeah. can tell the tell the version what version you are using if you are in like and in prism center also here you will see the nutanix version are you able to see my screen yeah yeah you can see 
I have yeah. shared all the like my entire desktop. So hope you will see. I am on Prism. So Prism, Nutanix. What version they are using? They are using 2017. So, okay. Yearly wise version they are they have released. Okay. 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 What uh, what year version is 2017 08 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Date. Date. They so have mentioned. Okay. So, what is the latest version? The latest version is like two thousand twenty-two. Okay. Okay. This is your Nutanix version. So, uh, what is your AOS version? AOS version is five point six, six point three. It is your A AOS version. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. And hardware hardware version is different. Hardware version you need to keep. You need to understand this point. This is your hardware. What hardware you are using? So this is your hardware version. Okay. okay. NX NX eight one five five zero N G G eight. You need to remember this thing whenever interview asks what version what version of hardware you are using. What is the like. Mm, hardware you are Nutanix hardware you are using, so you should be able to tell that NX three one seven zero. It is SDD built based. All SDDs are there. There is no SDD, so it is a capacity of mm, storage capacity of ninety TB, and there are thirty core processor and two hundred GB of RAM. So these are the common models for across the vendors, right? Yeah, these all are the common model. Okay. Across the vendor. Okay. What? So everyone will ask you this question: What hardware version? Okay. What AOS version you are using? What is okay. your NCC version? NCC means your Nutanix cluster checker. Okay. So it will check the cluster. So in Prism Center. In Prism Center, if you go here, this drop down, mm -hmm. and there is an option called NCC. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that NCC check, it mm -hmm. will run for five minutes. Okay. Okay. It will show you the bar processing bar, how much processing has been done. Okay. So once uh, NCC uh, has been completed, NCC check has been completed, it will give you the log bundle. Okay, and okay. it will show you the everything like your VMs are running fine, your hardware is running fine, your cluster is running fine, everything is running fine. It will show when you run the NCC check. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. this is and uh, in interview they will ask you what is NCC, what is NC two. So you should be able to give this answer. If you are a working professional, if you have some knowledge on it, you will tell boss. NCC check is used for checking the cluster uh, failure, cluster uh, health. You need to run the uh, NCC. So whenever you call to Nutanix support team, they will uh, ask you, boss, can you provide the NCC log bundle? So you need to run the NCC and you create a log bundle. And that log bundle you need to provide to that new Terex L4 guy. So they will analyze from their end. So they will check if the target, if the zookeeper, Zeus, all the services are running fine from their end. If the CVM is running fine, if your storage controller are running fine, your storage controller are running fine, the storage container are running fine. Everything they will check from their end and they will give you the report. If okay. something goes uh, failed, so they will take a remote. They will ask you, boss, can you uh, share the CVM control? Give me the uh, property. So from your laptop, you will connect the CVM. You will connect the CVM property, and you will give the control. He will connect inside. I will give you some of the like um, uh, some of the. I have. So, what is this full form NCC? Is it a Nutanix configuration check or Nutanix I mean, cluster cluster check? No, this is your.
So there are some commands I wanted to show you. So mm -hmm. sorry, I will share you all these documents with you and see okay. hardware show show hardware information. So when you connect with Nutanix, when you give the CVM control to Nutanix guy, so that guy Nutanix guy, what he will run? It he will run. NCC hardware information show hardware information so it will give you all the information of your hardware okay, okay. so NCC hardware information show hardware information CVN IP so CVM IP offline everything it will show in detail so the command will generate the log file so so log file this this command will generate the log file so where you will find the log file you need to go home slash home Nutanix data hardware logs. You'll find all the information in this log file only. So Nutanix, uh, how the Nutanix uh, uh, hypervisor is built? So in which operating system? What is the like um, the base it's operating? What is the base operating system? Acropolis. It's the Linux flavor, right? The yeah, Linux. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So ESXi, even ESXi is your operating system, but the base operating system is Linux, Linux right? Linux, yeah. Yes. Same like that in AOS, the base operating system is Linux only. Okay. So he will run some Linux command. So if you want to like uh, uh, be, if you want to be like L4 guy in Nutanix, mm -hmm. so get hands on on some Linux, Linux command. And okay. you will you will get all this uh, Nutanix uh, on Nutanix University. There is a website called Nutanix University. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. on that uh, Nutanix University, you will get all this command. Okay, yeah. you need to get. I, I will provide all the command, whatever the possible command I will share with you. Okay. Okay, but from your side. If you are good in Linux, you can run all this command and you will troubleshoot easily. Okay. If you are not Linux guy, then uh, you need to get, uh, you you need to, like L4 level of issue, you cannot solve. Okay. If there is like L3 issue, you will solve easily. <laughs> like uh, the hardware, fail, hardware failure or like your uh, CPU failure, NVRAM is failure, failed or your disk is failed, you can easily go into IDREC, you will go inside in IDREC and you will connect that box and you can easily replace that hardware, right? And anyhow you will share this uh, documents with us, right? Yeah, yeah, anyhow I will share the documents. Okay. Uh, this is like back panel of your Nutanix box. Mm -hmm. So this is your power cable. This is your network, Ethernet cable. This is your RJ45 connector. Okay. You need to check the connectivity when you go to data center. And if you are working remotely and your data center is in U Europe, US or UK. So you can tell the data center guy my i am facing some of the network issue can you go beside your nutanix box check if all light, lights are green or not here the lights limiting emitting green in green light should be emitted green if it is uh, showing red or orange there is uh, some connection check. problem okay. yeah you need to check mm, this is your usb this is your ipmi connection this is your ID rack connection, ID rack port. Okay. okay. This is your ID rack port. Okay. Okay. This is your 10 base T, your Ethernet connection, fiber, fiber connection. This HBA, HBA port are there. Okay. Okay. Deployment. Deployment of Nutanix. I have created this document for you only. So, at your home, if you want to deploy, mm -hmm. so you can use the foundation. You can go to the site Nutanix.com, mynutanix.com, and you can download this foundation, Nutanix foundation. But 
at least on your laptop there should be a ram of 32 gb to 64 gb okay 32 in 32 gb you cannot play you cannot create more vms or more storage but in uh, 64 bit 64 gb of ram you'll see uh, too many things okay okay hmm. so you download this thing you do some configuration okay so uh, once you download and configure so how you will deploy when see when when they ask you unbox this uh, storage and deploy cluster rail cluster rail okay so okay so they will they will provide you the box okay so for if you are a remote guy and you want to explain to like a data center guy so you can tell them boss this is the nutanix box and this uh, nutanix uh, box you need to place in the rack server okay yeah in rack server you need to explain the rail you need to attach the rail so beside that the rail Tray. tray tray is there that tray you should be able to attach here okay, okay. here yeah. first of all you need to attach the rail here for this unity 2.0 this rail you will attach here 2.0 this rail you will attach you will add the box once you add the box okay once you add the box this is the box you need to plug some cable for initial configuration once you have a power cable, you attach network cable. Once you've done all attachment, so you'll do this kind of thing. Okay. AOS, you need to configure. You need to configure the hypervisor, You what hypervisor you are using, what AOS you are using. So all configuration you need to do. Like uh, this is your initial configuration. The same like whatever doing in your lab, the same thing you will do in the real environment. The kind of configuration. Okay. Okay. So first of all, uh, you'll give the name of your configuration like whatever you're using. Like home lab. Home lab, you'll give the name as home lab and select your hardware, what hardware you're using. So in a real real environment you'll see the like you have purchased the hardware from dell okay okay in dell you are uh, implementing you are doing some configuration so you need to choose the uh, your hardware version is dell and then uh, you need to do do you want to rdm raw raw device ma mapping you want to do you want to do this uh, vlan LAG, you know, all the configuration like uh, subnet, what subnet uh, net mask you are using, your IP address of your gateway, everything you need to define here. Okay, and okay. node, huh? how many nodes you are adding, how many blocks are there? Uh, you are adding in the one cluster, you are adding, please uh, mute yourself. No? <clears throat> okay um, whenever you are adding a box so in, in initial configuration you need to mention how many blocks you are using how many nodes you are using per node node of block one how many node one node node okay. per block four okay. four Okay, you need to mention this thing here. Okay, so here you will see. So by default, uh, every Nutanix box will come with a four node, four block uh, as a node, or how? How it is? Yeah. I mean, are there any two block node, uh, or eight yes, block node like that? Yes, in small in small business though, mm -hmm. if they are using SDD. They are using two node, the two block node. Okay. okay. 
Okay. So you need to mention it is a two block node for per per block you are using. So you need to mention this thing here. Okay. And here you need to mention your management IP. It is IPMI. IPMI means for AOS, whatever box you are using, Cisco, for that reason, they are using this IPMI management tool. But if I purchase like Dell, so it will be Dell ID Rack IP. So mention the ID Rack IP. If you are using HP, so it will ask you ILO IP. So you need to mention the ILO IP here. Yeah. So what is the CVM IP? What is your host IP? Okay, you need to mention for node 1, node 2, node 3, you need to mention all the details here. If you want to choose automatically, you can choose to go to tools automatically, select automatic. It will get all the IP here automatically. So if you give, give one IP here, so next IP it will give here automatically. Okay. Okay. So this is the main configuration you need to do. Okay. In an interview, if they ask you, uh, do you have like uh, hands-on experience of deploying um, storage box? So you will tell, boss, I have hands-on experience. First of all, like we unbox the um, box, unbox the storage box from the box, and then we'll connect the cable. Uh, we'll put the uh, box inside the rail in the uh, in the rack and then we'll do some configuration like in configuration we need to get some ip first first of all you need to get the ip here okay yeah. what is the hypervisor ip what is the cvm ip what is your uh, like network ip this ip you need to get from networking guy from the like whatever the data center uh, guy is there you need to get all this IP from there, and yeah. then you can define this IP in initial uh, configuration. So we need to deploy in initial configuration. We need to plug the cable to the uh, storage box, and we need to do the initial configuration. Okay. okay, it will start. You need to put the IP address here. Initial start. You need to give the IP uh, IP uh, ID and password there. I will give you. Okay. File installation. Also, this field installation guide. Okay, it is from the new Tanix. Okay. Okay. It is, it is too much. See, in Nutanix, no, Nutanix less practical. It requires more more knowledge. Okay. Okay. So, if you see, you'll you'll see more too many document in Nutanix for KB document, KB release. For every error, he has released the KB document on Nutanix portal. So for Field installation guide will get another guide for how you can deploy the server. Yep. How you can, yeah, everything you will get here upgrade, hypervisor, post installation activity, how you will do. So, post installation, you will run this NCC health check. Okay. Okay. You will do all this uh, functionality. This is post installation. This is too much uh, big document, okay? Node configuration, how will do? How will you do the node configuration? Everything here uh, they have mentioned here. Uh, this is a uh, Lenovo converts uh, hypervisor. So this is a Lenovo Converse hypervisor. So these are the like um, port. You should uh, you should understand this port. This is four four port, one gig, RJ45 connection connection port. So this kind of boxes are there. And upgrading foundation VM GUI.
so these documents are like okay Okay, so you can continue yeah. with the uh, next topic, no problem. And how you will give us the document, right? So we'll go through that, and we'll yeah. let you know if you have any doubt. Yeah, please go through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, hello, sir. Can you continue by tomorrow, sir? Because okay, fine. So, fine, fine, no issue. Tomorrow okay. at twelve. Yeah, it's already twelve thirty. Because yeah. I have another yeah. meeting. That's why. Okay, okay, fine, no issue. We will connect tomorrow and uh, see. Uh, Uh, Tiru, if you want to be in this call, we will see that uh, yesterday's uh, what we have co covered in last week weekend. Okay. We will okay. cover. Yeah, yeah, please, I will be. Yeah, you can. Uh, Rishi, this uh, Arjun, you can leave. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Oh, uh, can you share the that uh, uh, recording also, sir? Yeah, I will share you the recording okay. Okay. if you want. Okay, okay sir okay fine. sir thank you sir thanks a lot okay okay fine yeah thanks thank sir you. bye and you are able to see my screen right tiru yes sir sir i am able to see it. okay okay Okay, this this I have already discussed with them earlier. So, what is named mm -hmm. Nutanix? Why the Nutanix is used? It is a hyper converged infrastructure, and it has too too much uh, like benefits. If you are using Nutanix with uh, on your ESXi on in your data center, you'll mm -hmm. get too many benefit with the Nutanix. You'll get like. Uh, There is no latency. There is no like uh, high high IOPS. No network failure chances of high redundancy, high resilience. All these feature you will get in Nutanix. So uh, this is your traditional. You are able to see my screen. Yeah, right? yeah, I am able to see. So yeah, okay. yeah, traditional. In traditional, the server is are connected with network storage. This is your traditional converge. Converge means you are using ESXi server. Okay. Mm -hmm. In in hyper converge, all your storage and your server are get combined. All the storage and your server, okay. the storage and your server, there is no network. The network is connected in between. Okay. And they they are in the box. They have connect given the HBA here, HBA to other box, HBA to third box. They have connected and through CVM. All the CVM, what the CVM will do, it will manage the all the storage through iSCSI controller. It will he will create the pool of um, storage using collecting all the ticks together. Suppose uh, node one has two SSD, node three has two SSD, node four uh, node three has three uh, two SSD. All six SSD, the CVM will club together. He will create a pool in between. And that pool is called storage pool. And whatever the storage container, whatever the storage volume you will create, you will create from that also, that only. And you will give some of the storage to to the storage box. Okay. okay. Uh, I will stop this this recording now. I will 